So this is a fun little one to do if you just can't figure out how to root anything. We're going to propagate some willow. And if you can't figure out how to get this stuff to root, you got some splaining to do. So I went out and collected some willow branches and what you want to look for is you want new fresh growth from the previous year and now it's dormant. We're doing this in the winter time. Today's January 15th, but you can see the older growth doesn't have this um, that's like two years old or older, but the newer growth has these little bud sites all along the little branches there. All those little sites are where new branches are going to shoot off, new leaves and branches and all that. And that's what you want. The current the, the growth that came out last summer. Now this stuff right here is chock full of rooting hormones and auxins and you don't need to worry at all about rooting hormones. So if you don't have access to rooting hormone, this is another real good one for you to try and root. And there it is. So this is really all you have to do. I'm gonna take this little glass inside and we'll put it on a windowsill and it'll be in a nice warm environment, about 68 to 70 degrees inside the house. And because it's dormant out here, or it's cold out here right now, and these guys are dormant, putting them indoors will start making them wake up and think it's spring. And so they'll slowly start rooting and then slowly start putting on top growth out of all these things. This it's, it's a lot of fun. You can do it with your kids. Anybody can get this stuff to root. I actually blew away a coworker because we had somebody, a family came up at my work with a vase of flowers and it had some twisted willow in there. And she said, man, I'd really like to grow one of those. How do I do it? I said, take it home, throw it in a glass of water. It'll root. And within like, I don't know, a week or less, I don't even remember, she came back to work all excited. She said, oh my gosh, it rooted. Well, that's the thing with willow. You can root this stuff no matter what variety you've got, no matter, you know, how big or long the stems are, this stuff will root. Like I said, I'm going to go put this inside now and just see what happens. And I'll let you guys know when something's happened. All right, it's been several days now. I'll have to look back and see exactly how many days. I'll put it down here in the video. But we've got our willow cuttings all sitting here nicely. They've been inside the kitchen in the windowsill and they're already starting to put some growth out through the buds. And you can see some root initials starting to pop out here. I'm gonna show it to you real quick. Look at that. All those little white dots in there, those are all root initials. And these guys are just so easy to root. Those roots, any day now are just going to start growing out from all of those little sites and you can see we've got all kinds of green growth all those little buds there are just starting to open up and want to grow and it's because they've been in a nice warm house a nice warm environment so from here i'm going to divide this experiment into two different parts i want to see what some of these guys we'll just cut them in half here and we'll see what some of them do in the water and we'll continue with that little experiment and see how they root, how well they grow, and where they go from here. And then the other half, I want to take out and put into this soilless medium, my fine fur bark, and just see if they root in this material as well and see which one grows better. If they can grow better in this material, it might be more beneficial because then you don't have to take these water roots and try to transplant them. Sometimes we can run into problems with that. If they root really well in here, then we can just leave them all summer long, all tucked in here, and let them grow as much as possible. Let them go dormant next winter, and then pull them out when the roots are hard and gnarly and tough, and repot them into individual pots.
and there we have it we've got five of them in each little section here so five in the water and you can see those guys have just beautiful little root initials just starting to pop open here and we're going to get roots out of all those guys and it will these roots will swirl around in here and they'll grow really nicely and then we've got five of them in this pot here i think it's going to Anyway, I'm interested to see how this turns out, and if this one works out better, then this would be the ideal setup because you wouldn't have to transition. But let's get these guys back inside the house into a nice warm environment and see what they do. All right, so we're back inside the house, and I thought I would just go ahead and get it fired back up again. We've got the lights on underneath this little grow room table that I've been using over the years. And those are those fluorescent tubes that I've been using. I did, however, this time, I took out a couple bulbs here, four of them. This is an eight bulb setup. It's a commercial setup. I had to order it specially. But uh, I took four bulbs out because it was quite a bit of light for all the house plants that I had under here last year. So we got our little willow pushed under here and we'll see if that's enough light, how it's gonna go. I think it's gonna be just fine. We've got a little experiment. And today is, what is it, January 25th, I believe. I'll have that down here at the bottom. But uh, we'll come back when something's happened, guys. Let's go. So here they are, and it has been only four days since that last little clip. Today is January 29th. You can see I've got some other little projects going on over here. We'll get to that later. But check these guys out. Look at these little willow cuttings. You remember what they looked like just a few seconds ago for you guys. Look at all of those roots. Look at that, and all that top growth. Beautiful top growth just pouring out of there. Got a little flower on there. These guys are just looking fantastic, but look at that. Isn't that just absolutely fabulous? I love seeing those roots pour out of there, and so quickly. I mean, it's only been a few days. I think it was the day after I put them under here, I started seeing a little root pop out of that one. And then the second day I saw, look at this guy. The second day I saw roots starting to hit the edge of this cup just that quickly. And then now, just a few days later, here we are. We've got, look at this one, we've got roots all over, all around this cup just pouring out. So that worked really well sliding these guys right into this soil. And obviously you can see, isn't that pretty? You can see all those roots down in there. Both sets seem to be doing real good. So it's only been 18 days and we've learned something very valuable with these little cuttings. Did they both root? Well, yeah, absolutely, they both rooted. I mean, check that out. It's just, I love all those roots just swimming around there in that little glass of water. And they look very healthy. This guy too, both of them rooted. We've got roots coming out to the side there all the way around. But there's one big difference and that is this one's growing in soil and this one's growing in water. So. What did we learn and where do we go from here? Well, this is gonna get a little more in depth now. So this is where the two sides split and this is where they each go their own separate way. So if you guys have experience with rooting cuttings in water, then you know that a lot of cuttings rooted in water tend to have a little bit of a tougher time transitioning into soil. I've killed cuttings in the past doing it and I'm sure you guys have too. It's just, it's two different types of roots. I, you know, I don't fully understand why or what the deal is behind it. I probably need to do a little research on that, but there it is. We've got beautiful roots. We've got beautiful roots, but they got to part ways here. Here's the advantage of rooting these in soil versus water. Now that I've got these beautifully rooted right here in this soil, I can just leave them. I can fertilize them, water them, and just watch them continue to grow. They're already in soil or a soilless medium, my potting soil here, the fine fir bark. And I don't need to do anything to them to continue watching these little guys just thrive. Come spring, I can bring them outside and they'll grow beautifully right in this cup. All the roots will become intertwined completely. I won't disturb them because when you disturb them, that's when it sets these little cuttings back. I'll just leave them in this little pot, bring it out here into the hoop house and we'll just let them grow beautifully. I'll fertilize them with a slow release fertilizer. They'll grow all summer long. Yes, the roots will get tangled, but if you guys remember back to my Japanese maple videos and the green giant videos, after they go through an entire summer, they will then go dormant in the fall and in the winter, the late winter preferably, we can pull that whole mass of roots out and they've now hardened off through the winter so they're tough. They're not easy to break. They're not fragile. They're hard, they're tough, and they'll be out here in the freezing cold temps. will come out late winter 
next year and we'll pull all of them apart, repot them up into individual pots, and they'll just take off like crazy come spring. We've done it over and over and over again with our green giants, our Japanese maples, and anything else that are really hardwood cuttings done in the late winter. In regard to the water cuttings, as beautiful as they are, I mean, look at those roots. I just, it looks so beautiful in that little vase there. But as beautiful as it is, this is kind of where they're at. You can pot them up into individual pots now, but they struggle going from, and I've done this in the past, they struggle going from these water roots into soil. You don't get the same outcome that you get in something like this. And now that I've seen the difference firsthand, I'm telling you guys right now, this is the way I'm going with from now on. We're going to be putting these guys in soil right from the very beginning. Now, it might be an advantage to soak them in some water like we did here for the first few days to get them fully hydrated in a warm environment in the house. But when you see those little root initials, you get those guys stuck into some soil and you're golden. You're good to go. There's no transition. There's no you know struggle to go from water to soil. I mean... I suppose you could take this whole thing, just let them continue to grow and put this out here next fall and let it freeze. But this water is going to freeze hard as a rock. I don't think it would work, but, you know, we can always try something like that. So there it is. I'm going to let these guys continue to grow inside. We'll just compare them side by side and uh, come back out and show you when something's happened later in the spring. Show you where they're at. See how things are going. In the meantime, I hope you guys learned something. I know I did. If you did and you like this video, hit the like button. Subscribe if you want to follow along. Enjoy your week, guys. Adios!